Hello everybody and welcome to Simple Harmonic Motion Lesson 7. In the last video we looked at the effect of forces which act to resist the motion in an SHM system which of course we said were collectively known as damping forces and we looked at the three different cases we looked at light damping where those resistive forces are low compared to the forces that are acting to keep the system in simple harmonic motion in the first place we looked at heavy damping, which is where the resistive forces are very high. And then we looked at that crossover point, which was called critical damping. In this lesson then, rather than looking at resistive forces, we're going to look at driving forces. So where resistive forces act to decrease the motion, to decrease the velocity, driving forces act to increase it. Firstly, then, we need to have a look at a couple of definitions. And the first thing that we're going to define in this video is the term natural frequency. Now, going back over uh, the, the videos previously in this topic, we know that we've looked at the simple pendulum on the left and the mass on, mass on spring system on the right. And for both of those, we've derived the time period equations for them. So for the simple pendulum, T is equal to 2 pi root L over G. And for the mass on spring, T is equal to 2 pi root M over K. Now, once we've got those equations, we also know that in general, uh, when we've got any kind of oscillating system, any kind of periodic system, that the frequency of the system is 1 over the time period. So it's not going to take too much to take our two time period equations and to convert them into frequency. So for the simple pendulum, F is equal to 1 over 2 pi root of g over l uh, and for the mass on spring f is equal to 1 over 2 pi multiplied by root k over m now of course that's how to work them out from a theoretical point of view of course if you're doing it from an experimental point of view uh, then you're just going to calculate the time period uh, and then obviously just do one over that to calculate the frequency now for those two systems if we just displace them and allow them to oscillate and did absolutely nothing else to them we know that they would oscillate at that time period and therefore they would oscillate at the frequencies that we've written on the screen because there are no other forces apart from obviously a little bit of damping which um, we spoke about in the last video uh, remember of course that damping doesn't change the time period of oscillation so really in this conversation it becomes um, fairly irrelevant anyway uh, but anyway if we just left them to oscillate they would oscillate at that time period that frequency by themselves and that's therefore known as the natural frequency and there then is the definition, a real definition of, of natural frequency. So the natural frequency of an oscillating system is the frequency where no external driving forces act. Now, in order to have a look at uh, force oscillations and um, sort of the effect that that will have, we're going to have a look at um, this piece of equipment here, which, as you can see on the screen, uh, is known as Barton's pendulum. Uh, now, obviously, the video is paused. I will uh, just press play in a moment. Um, but what you can see is that you've got six different pendulums, six different lengths. Uh, on the far right hand side, we've got this pendulum here. Okay, so if you have a look at the length of that pendulum here, uh, and you can see that the bob on that is uh, larger than the other five bobs. Uh, we then have five different pendula of differing lengths. So from the longest down at this end up to the shortest up at this end. Now each one of these pendula 
will have its own natural frequency. Uh, and as we said on the last slide, we can either calculate that, we can work it out by measuring the length and, and plugging it through the equation, or of course, we can just set them in oscillation by themselves um, and measure their time period and measure their frequency from that. What you can also see, hopefully well enough, is that there is a string here which is connecting them all together. Uh, now, when I press play, what you'll see is um, the one on the right-hand side will be set into oscillation, uh, and we'll talk about what's going on um, as we sort of see it happening on the screen. Uh, what hopefully you may have noticed by now is that the length of this pendulum here on the right-hand side which is the one that will be set into motion, is roughly the same as the middle one, as this third one here. Uh, these two are obviously too short, and these two, as you can see, are longer. So if, if anything, I'd just like you to focus on this middle one, obviously have a glance at the two either side as well. But like I said, just keep an eye on that middle one. Okay, so let's just press play on that. Okay, so stationary, and we're going to set that right-hand one in motion. Now, what we can see immediately is that the first two aren't really doing anything, and the last two aren't doing much at all. But this middle one, we can see already, um, has started oscillating by itself. Okay, we can see that actually the amplitude of those oscillations is, is actually fairly large. So what's going on here? Well, this pendulum here, the, the, uh, the largest bob, the more massive bob, is producing a driving force. If you have a look, you can see that as it's oscillating, it's also making this string at the top oscillate as well. Now, those oscillations, you can see even when we come down to this end, we can see just about, I know the background isn't brilliant, uh, but we can see that the string is moving there. In other words, this horizontal string is putting a force, is applying a force onto all five of these pendula. It just so happens that the period... Okay, or the frequency of that force going through the string, which we call the applied frequency, is almost the same as the natural frequency of this central pendulum. What we're seeing and the effect that we're seeing on the screen is known as resonance. And we'll come back in a moment onto the whiteboard and we'll define that term resonance. Now you can see as well, it's not quite perfect. We At the moment, we've got hardly any oscillation of this central bob at all. But if we just give it a moment or two, okay, and we can see it's already starting to undergo those large amplitude oscillations again. There they are. Okay, and there it is going back into resonance again. And as I said, uh, if you go back over the last two and a half minutes we've been watching it, these these two here and these two here have, uh, haven't got into any kind of oscillation at all. What we can do now then is start to define some of the things that we saw on that demonstration. Now, um, the system and the, the, the five smaller pendula um, were subject to forced oscillations. And you can see the definition of forced oscillations there. So a system undergoes forced oscillations when it is subject to a periodic driving force. Relating that back to the demonstration, then, firstly, it was this... Uh, larger pendulum on the right hand side that was providing the periodic driving force. So we're just going to shorten that to PDF for periodic driving force. So remember what we did then, that was the one that we set into oscillation. Um, that pendulum then caused the string up here to oscillate itself and that exerted a force that applied a force to the five smaller pendula. Uh, 
Um, now again, let's think about what a periodic driving force actually means. Well, uh, let's work backwards through. It's a force. Well, hopefully we should know what a force is by now. Um, the driving bit um, just means that it acts to increase the velocity. And then the periodic bit means that it has its own time period. So then that periodic driving force was being exerted on all five of the smaller pendula. Um, and that's where we started to see resonance, which we'll move on to in just a moment's time. Now, we said that um, it's periodic, so we can measure the time period of that driving force. Well, if we can measure the time period of the driving force, then we can also measure the frequency. And we call it F with a subscript A, which stands for applied frequency. Uh, or, of course, in other words, that's just the frequency of the periodic driving force. So we're now in a position to define this term resonance, which I spoke about earlier. So we know that the frequency of the pendulum on the right hand side was our applied frequency and the five small ones all have their own natural frequency. So F with the subscript N is the natural frequency. So why did only this central bob go into that large amplitude, into that resonant motion that we saw? Well, it comes down to a very simple um, relationship. The supplied frequency is roughly the same as the natural frequency. How do we know that the two are roughly the same? Well, the length of the pendulum here is similar to the length of the pendulum here. And compared to the other four, one, two, three, four, compared to the other ones, that applied frequency isn't um, even approximately the same. It's going to be completely different. So we now have the condition when the applied frequency is approximately equal to the natural frequency of a system that will therefore imply and that will therefore cause resonance to occur. Now, when we're looking at resonance, what we saw in the demonstration was the uh, the more extreme case uh, where we had a relatively large periodic driving force. Uh, and that periodic driving force, which was from uh, this pendulum here, would have been significantly larger than any damping forces applied um, to those systems. Uh, so when we have a large periodic driving force, we end up with large amplitude oscillations. Now, of course, if we only had a, a small periodic driving force, uh, again, when we're talking about a small periodic driving force, it's relative to any damping forces um, that uh, are applied to the system. Um, if you have a small periodic driving force, all it's really going to do, depending on exactly the size of it, but all it will really do is negate uh, any damping that is uh, applied to the system. Now, instead of uh, a question for you to work through uh, for this video, what I'd like you to do instead is to go away and just do a little bit of further reading, uh, further viewing, um, if you want to, uh, on a couple of examples of where resonance uh, sort of went completely wrong. Uh, the first one on the left-hand side uh, is the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. Uh, now, the, 
the, that bridge itself uh, was uh, in Washington State, uh, which is up uh, north Pacific coast of America. Um, and that one is quite an old one, it actually, uh, or at least when it all started to go badly, when it was in 1940, so uh, or 80 years ago now. Um, one sort of closer to home and closer to where we are in time at the moment is the Millennium Bridge uh, and the clues in the title there. Uh, that was uh, at least open for the millennium back in 2000. Uh, now, both are classic examples of where uh, we see resonance occurring in, in quite large objects. Um, funnily enough, both of those, if we go back to the last video, to SHM6, uh, both of those uh, systems um, could and nowadays are prevented by having some force of some form sorry of critical damping system in the structure of the bridges themselves now of course there are lots of other uh, examples of where resonance occurs um, again if you look on the internet look on youtube etc um, you can find videos of classically trained singers hitting a certain note and getting a wine glass to shatter or something like that um, all of that comes down to this effect resonance so to summarise then, in this video we've looked at resonance, we've looked at what it is and how to define it. Firstly, we defined the natural frequency, uh, where the natural frequency of an oscillating system is the frequency where no external driving forces act. Uh, and we said that that was F with a subscript N. Uh, we also defined uh, forced oscillations, so a system undergoes forced oscillations when it is subject to a periodic driving force, and the frequency of the periodic driving force was F with a subscript A. Now, resonance occurs... ...occurs when those two, the natural frequency, is approximately the same as the applied frequency. Finally then we have to have a look at the size of the periodic driving force. Uh, if we have a large periodic driving force uh, then that will cause large amplitude oscillations in the system. Uh, whereas if it is a small periodic driving force, try that one again, um, then again, depending on the size, depending on the size of that periodic driving force compared to any damping forces, then it will just act to negate damping. So that's it for this video and in fact uh, that is also the end of the simple harmonic motion topic. Uh, as usual if there are any questions any queries please don't hesitate to get in contact otherwise I'll see you in another series of videos.